siblings welcome back to my channel today i'm going to be filming a very 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 highly requested video i'm really nervous to film this video because i'm going to be extremely vulnerable which is something that really scares me this video is all about why i decided to leave the mormon church the mormon church is also known as the lds church the church Jesus christ of latter-day saints I was born into and raised as a Mormon. Uh, they are now called LDS, but I'm just gonna call them Mormon in this video because that's like what I was used to. This is gonna be a long video, so buckle up. First off, I am gonna start with a disclaimer. I am not here to bash on people who are Mormon or to try to tear down this church. I'm talking about my own personal experiences, the truths that I have learned, and just why I personally decided to leave. I'm not speaking for anyone else. And some of the things I say could be offensive for active true believing mormons so it is out there disclaimer i'm talking about very sensitive topics here today a lot of my family is still mormon and i'm not trying to offend them or anyone else but i do have to make this video and the reason i want to make this video is one so i can answer all the questions and two because it is a very lonely process to go through this and i know so many of my followers have been dming me saying that they're going through the same thing and just need help and want to know my story and where i'm coming from and so if i could help even just one person by being super vulnerable on the internet like this, then it's worth it to me. So basically, my problem is not with the church members, it is with the church. That is what I'm talking about. So let's get started. So to fully understand my story, you kind of have to know my history and where I came from. So I come from, my dad's side of the family has been Mormon for generations. They actually helped start the church in my hometown or the branch of the church in my hometown. My dad is super, super active. He's very into like deep doctrine and like kind of has like answers for every questions. I would say he would gr be a great Mormon apologetic. I grew up being very, very involved in the church. My parents were in leadership positions, all that sort of thing. My mom, on the other hand, was a convert and then she stopped going to church when my parents got a divorce. So when I was about like six or seven. So I grew up with one very active parent and then one inactive parent, but I did live with my dad. And like our house rules growing up were basically just follow the church teachings and that's the house rules. I went to seminary in high school. I went to like girls camp every year. I went to EFY like three times. My family even did a church history tour in our RV and went up to New York and all of that stuff. I was baptized when I was eight, I started going to the temple when I was 12, and I was endowed when I was 18. So very, very involved. So where did it go wrong? Let's dive in. I have it kind of written down so I can not go off of what I'm trying to say. So basically as a kid, I had like a decent testimony. It was very much uh, rooted in like my family's testimony and like my parents. I would go through like ups and downs of like being really, really strong, believing like this is the truth to kind of towards the end, I was at the point where I was like, okay, well, I feel like it's like kind of true, but there's so many things that are wrong that I just don't think make any sense. But I still thought like, oh, well, the church is true at the end of the day. So I was basically going off with like my basis was the church was true and Everything else could be wrong, but like, I don't know if that makes sense. Um, I do remember one year when I went to EFY, I went there pretty much having little to no testimony. I was very, very confused and I was about 16 and this is when I first really started to question my faith. And by the time I left, the only confirmation I had was that God was real and he was there for me and he was looking out for me. And I had no confirmation of the Book of Mormon, no confirmation of the church being true. I never did. As much as I tried, I read the whole Book of Mormon. I prayed about it. I did all the things you're supposed to and I never was like, oh yeah, it's true. I just kind of went along with it. So I would always say like, yeah, it's true. Yeah, I believe in the Book of Mormon, but like, I don't think I ever truly did. I just knew that God was real and I was just told from a very young age that the Mormon church is true. There are no other options and all other Christian churches are just missing something. And so if you believe in God, you have to be Mormon. It's kind of like the thoughts that were in my head. But I remember as a kid, always trying to come up with excuses to skip church or fake being sick to try to skip or try to skip Wednesday night activities, try to leave girls camp early. Early. The only thing I really, really enjoyed was EFY because I just liked hanging out with kids my age and stuff. Overall, I had a pretty good experience in the church. I didn't have too many like crazy, bad, traumatizing experiences like a lot of people do who leave the church. I always told myself that I had the desire to gain a desire to gain a testimony, but I didn't actually even have a desire to gain a testimony. I was just kind of going with the flow and like whatever my family told me to do this, so I'll just do this. So. I have a couple topics that we're gonna hit. So we're gonna start with the Mormon culture because I wanna clarify that I'm not leaving strictly because of the culture, but I do wanna touch on it. So the, for those of you who are not Mormon, there is this 
culture and Mormonism where you're basically expected to be perfect. They're always giving you unachievable goals. A lot of this kind of is rooted in the doctrine, but the culture can be very, very toxic. And this also depends on like the ward that you're in or where you grew up, your family, all this kind of stuff. Um, I grew up in Missouri and it was a little bit toxic, but I felt most of the toxic pressure just from being openly Mormon online. I always had people like in my DMs telling me I wasn't being a good enough Mormon. I was being a bad example. I needed to step up my game and I always felt the pressure to be perfect and like I was always falling short and I also always had this pressure like it was my responsibility to bring my mom back to the church which like as a kid that was like really hard for me because um, families are like one of the main important things in Mormonism and so coming from a divorced family and my mom not being active I felt this like unique sort of pressure and already feeling like I failed because my mom wasn't Mormon but I loved my mom so much and so that was really really hard for me and I always felt judged for coming from like a non-traditional family because my dad remarried and I had step siblings and we had a big blended family I wasn't always the perfect Mormon and there's always these like pressures that you need to like follow all the rules you need to like one of the things is like not you're not supposed to date or really even kind of hang out with people who aren't Mormon I was always told like oh well if you just surround yourself with people who have the same values which means other Mormons then like you'll be fine but all of my friends were not Mormon I dated guys who weren't Mormon and I definitely felt judged for that or I felt like it was my job to convert them like I can only be friends or be dating them if I'm actively trying to convert them which I never was so <laughs> also in Mormonism it's a huge culture thing there are members and there are non-members and that's the way that they think of the world if you run into other members while you're out and about it's like you found your like secret little friends um, and then the rest of the world is just non-members so it's like oh well they're not members so they wouldn't really understand like we can't really hold them accountable because they're not members it almost feels like non-members people who aren't Mormon are looked down upon and Mormons definitely have this like superiority complex where they think they know all the answers and have it all right and everyone else is just like lost and confused. If I ever posted anything or did something that seemed like it was against the church I would have other Mormons in my DMs telling me that I am wrong and I need to repent which was just crazy to me because I was just like 16 and for someone who was already struggling having people call me out for sinning just pushed me away even further. So that's kind of like the culture but overall none of that is what like pushed me out of the church. It obviously sucked but I think you can find toxic culture within any religion and any group so now I'm gonna get into like what actually kind of made me leave so the next section I'm talking about is questioning so like I said I've kind of always struggled with my faith in the church obviously it would have some highs it would have some lows but I never was 100% sure where I stood or if I really truly thought it was true when I was younger I thought it was the only path so I just went with it but when I grew up and became an adult and kind of moved out I realized how much of an impact this would have on my life and I actually did have a choice if I wanted to be in it or not and I needed to make that decision because it was really affecting my life. I began to feel really trapped and suffocated by the Mormon church. I always felt like I wasn't doing my best. I was always falling short. I couldn't always follow all the standards that I put out before you. I never even wanted to do those things so I felt like horrible about myself because I didn't want to dress modestly. I didn't want to go to church. I didn't want to go to the temple. I didn't want to do those things you're supposed to do. I didn't want to read the Book of Mormon and I hardly even like wanted to pray. I feel like I really only stayed for other people after I was an adult and I would just go because everyone was like, oh, you need to go. And I didn't want people like pulling me aside and talking to me and being like, oh, she's losing her testimony. We need to talk to her. So I just kind of like was like, oh, I'll just like pretend like everything's all good so people don't annoy me. So I did end up getting married in the temple when I was 18, which also means I got my endowments when I was 18. And I feel like if it was up to me, I would have not done this. My choice was I wanted to get married outside the temple and then later go get sealed in the temple. Um, I wasn't 100% sure where I stood with my testimony, but I was always told, oh, you need to get married in the temple, and I had wanted to do that since I was a little kid, so it's like, yeah, of course I'll do that. I wish I could have gotten married first outside the temple, but for those of you who don't know, I was sealed in the temple, and no uh, non-members are allowed in the temple. You have to have a temple recommend to go in. So my mom was not able to attend, and a lot of my siblings were not able to attend, which broke my heart. None of my mom's side of the family was able to attend, so I did have a separate day that was like a ring ceremony for everyone where it's basically a normal traditional civil wedding but we just like didn't legally get married that day we legally got married the day before so I did start to deeply question my faith and what I really believed in pretty much all of like pretty much all of like 2019 and 2020 so before I went
went through the temple and got my endowments, which I'll explain in a bit. These were like some of the questions that I was always questioning, always confused about. Why is the word of wisdom such a big deal? There were like these little things in it that just didn't make sense. Like you can't drink coffee or tea, but energy drinks are fine. And like Mountain Dew is fine. Why are there so many rules? They always say, oh, they're not rules. They're just like guidelines to life or standards we have. But there's so many of them. It is so hard to constantly be keeping up. Why are women so suppressed in the church? Men hold all the power in the church and only men can have the priesthood, which never really bothered me before until I really started thinking about it. The highest like role that a woman has is being like the Relief Society president, which makes you just like in charge of the women. I don't know. It's just like from my point of view, I felt like women just were not up to par with men in the Mormon church. And there's a lot of other instances of that that I can talk about later. Why do people have to wear garments and dress so modestly? Why is everyone so judgy? Is the Book of Mormon really true? Why does nothing in the church add up? Why is the church contradicting itself all the time? Why does the church change its standards all the time? Why do bi bishops have power to be so invasive? And going along with the bishops thing, I will talk about this a little bit later, so I'm kind of jumping around, but basically like bishops determine whether or not you have a temple recommend. Uh, they determine whether or not you can take the sacrament if you commit like a big sin you have to repent through your bishop and bishops starting at the age of 12 are behind closed doors with young men and young women asking them things like um, if they're following the word of wisdom or things about their sexuality which has caused a lot of problems I personally never had a bad experience but I know so many people that have and it is heartbreaking and a lot of bishops do manipulate the power that they have there and it's scary that these old men are behind closed doors with 12 to 18 year old girls. Okay, but all that aside, I then went through the temple and got my endowment, so let's talk about that. First off, I just wanna say that personally, I don't think I was ready to get my endowments and I really was only doing it because I wanted to get sealed in the temple. You have to get your endowments to get sealed in the temple. So it was basically like I didn't have an option. So basically the endowment is, I think you can start at the age of 18 if you just like feel like you're ready to go or you have to do it before mission or you get married and most commonly men will do it before the mission or a girl if she goes on a mission and women usually end up doing it right before they get married. Some people do just decide to do it, but it is one of the like requirements to reach the highest tier of heaven in Mormonism. So eventually you have to do it. So going into the temple, they don't tell you anything. They don't really give you a heads up. You take a temple prep class where they don't talk about anything that's gonna happen in the temple. Luckily, my dad sat me down beforehand and I had kind of done a little bit of my own research and saw what I was gonna be wearing, what I was gonna be doing, kind of what it was gonna look like. So it wasn't too much of a shock factor. Um, like. The knowledge of what I was gonna do, but when you're there doing it, whoo, it is traumatizing. At least for me, my first experience and my only experience going through an endowment session was horrible. It was traumatizing. I was so scared, and after I left, I just kept thinking to myself, what cult did I just join? Everyone's wearing white, and you wear these robes, and you do these handshakes, and there's you're making promises with God that you don't really understand, and you're given this like secret name and or sacred name, whatever. Um, only your husband gets to know the wife's name. The wife never gets to know the husband's name. You can't ever say this name outside the temple. Uh, there's a man that like pulls you through the veil and then you go into the celestial room and you walk out and your whole family's standing there wearing the weird outfits and they're all hugging you and telling you how proud they are and you're just traumatized. At least that was my experience. It was very scary to me and I didn't want to talk to anyone about this. So I just shut my mouth and said, okay, I did it. I just want to get married now. I was unaware until like the week before my wedding that I was going to have to wear those robes over my wedding dress. I went into there so mad because my wedding dress was like my dream dress and I wanted to look so beautiful on my wedding day and then I was wearing all these weird things and the people in the temple just kept telling me how pretty I looked and you look like an angel and I was like about to cry because I just look, I felt so horrible about myself and was like not confident at all and for me the temple's uh, ceiling ceremonies are not special at all. You're in a separate room so first your husband like pulls you through the veil and learns your name and then you're sitting in a room. I don't know if I'm supposed to talk about this or not but you can look it all up online. So I'm other people talk about it more in depth. I'm trying to be pretty vague. You're in this room together and then everyone's in the ceiling room and then you walk in together and you sit on you like kneel on opposite sides of a altar and you like hold hands 
and then the person like says stuff and you're like, yes, and then you kiss. And like, that's it. There's no vows, no walking down the aisle, no like anything crazy special. It's just simple, kind of creepy. And there's like two mirrors. So like, you just see like reflections, infinite reflections. It's supposed to represent like eternity together, but it's kind of like weird. And like, you're staring at your family anyways. Um, yeah, so that was my experience. <laughs> also, I remember as a kid when I did like the baptisms for the dead, I never like fully enjoyed it or like felt the spirit doing it. I was just kind of there. So my friends were going, all my family was going, I kind of had to go and I was like, sure, you're like, yeah, whatever. But it was never like a, I never had like a crazy experience. Oh, I also didn't explain what the garments are. So when you, <laughs> So many questions to answer. This is a long video. So when you get your endowment the first time, you also do this other ceremony where you receive your garments. So you'll go into your locker room, you change into your garments, and then you put your dress on over your garments, and then you go and do the ceremony, and that's where they give you your new name. Garments are, it's a white shirt. It's like cap sleeved and not very low cut, and it's kind of see-through, but it's like white, and there's a couple different materials, and then long shorts that go down to your knees, and they have like symbols in them, and they're supposed to like represent the covenants you make in your your endowment you are required to wear these for the rest of your life every single day and I say required and forced because some people are like oh well you're not forced to do anything but the option is wear them or risk your eternal salvation. So, of course, it feels like forced that you have to wear them. Um, so after I received my garment, I wore them for I think two and a half months and I said, I'm done. I hate these. I was so insecure. I was like hating my body. I felt ugly. I've never felt less sexy than I had in those. And keep in mind, this was the first couple months of my marriage and I'm wearing these and I'm just uh, uh, Luckily, my ex didn't really care. And neither did I so I just kind of stopped wearing them and then I would only wear them when I knew I was gonna be like around family or at church and then eventually everyone figured out I wasn't wearing them so then I just stopped wearing them because I was literally only wearing them for other people I hated them and so I was like wait why am I even wearing these if it's supposed to be for God and I'm wearing them for other people then it kind of ruins the purpose anyway so I stopped wearing them okay that was kind of a lot so now on to the search so I was at this point pretty fed up with the church I had all of these questions and I knew all the these like little facts that made me just like uncomfortable about the church and I was feeling trapped by it and I just gone through this thing in the temple and hated it and was so confused why God wanted this for us so I started my search on is this even true am I being lied to where did this come from and this is what broke my shelf so here we go so basically when lockdown first happened I was super excited because they closed down going to church in person and so I didn't have to go anymore uh, I went like once or twice to like church at my dad's house but then I stopped doing that too and I was so relieved because this was like a time I could finally like question everything and no one would know that I wasn't going. And also side note, when I did go back to church, there was like two or three weeks before I moved to Utah where I started going even though I 100% didn't believe anymore and I have never felt more uncomfortable or anxious or just like stressed in my life than going to church those days. And it was only a sacrament meeting, just the one hour and I was stressed. In summer 2020, I started doing a lot more research on like Christianity versus Mormonism because I knew God was real and I knew Jesus had died for us and that was it. That was like my basis. I didn't know if anything else was true. And I remember growing up, people always asked me, oh, well, what's the difference between Christianity and Mormonism? And I never knew what to answer because I did not know how many differences there are. I'll get into them later but I was so shocked at like the differences, um, how like the Book of Mormon and the Bible contradict each other. The God that is talked about in the Book of Mormon is a completely different God that is talked about in the Bible. And now being not in the church, I see how the Mormons view God and it is so different than how Christians view God. And then after that, my next step was kind of like, I started watching videos of people who used to be Mormon and then switched to Christianity and kind of like what their testimonies were and how they went down that, which is kind of why I wanted to to make this video because that helped me like so much. I was listening to like podcasts, I was listening to Mormon Stories podcasts and just trying to like take in all the information I could because if the church was true, it should be able to hold true no matter what information you learn, right? but it didn't. <laughs> I started doing research on the history of the church and eventually found out that it wasn't true. And no matter how hurt I was by the people or the culture or just not being happy in the church, I was still trying so hard and finding out that the church wasn't true and finding out all these facts that just made me know that that wasn't 
right was heartbreaking it was a very lonely time and i already had very low mental health and then adding this onto it i was going through the roughest time of my life and finding out everything that i grew up on the basis of my life wasn't true crushed me and that is why i'm making this video also because other people who make videos like this is like what got me through it so now i'm going to talk about some of those things that i learned that crushed my testimony so this is where i draw the line for if you are not ready to hear this information then be warned so first off i just want to say that mormons always tell you to only look at church approved resources because there's a lot of lies on google and of course you can find lies it's all just anti-Mormon propaganda and you're basically told only view what the church shows you, only listen to what the prophet tells you. If there was something wrong they would tell you, right? And looking at outside resources is anti-Mormon propaganda and you are just throwing your testimony away. Yeah, basically that was like red flag number one was that everyone is like, don't look at that. It's like, well, if your church was true, it should hold true no matter what you learn. So here we go. <laughs> um, I feel like the church tries pretty hard to bury the truth and scare you into not doing your research. They are very manipulative of your emotions and they're very good at this. And that was a major problem for me. I'm a very critical thinker and I like to do research on my own and figure things out for my own. I don't like being told what to read, what to think, where to do my research. Obviously it's important to find credible sources, but if you're looking for answers about Mormonism within Mormonism, of course it's always gonna back itself up. That's like if I, <laughs> It's like if I just like wrote a book and said this book is true and then you're like, oh, well, can I do some research to see like where this came from? And I'm like, no, read the book. The book tells you it's true. Like, is that not questionable? I was thinking if the church has to control what you can research, that's a major red flag. So I started with the classic, the go-to, the CES letter. This is where you can find all the information. They have links that track back even to the church website. So it's kind of like, okay, if they want you to use church resources, well, here's the CES letter that tells you the truth. And then this is like exactly where we found it from. And it has a bunch of credible sources. And then I also did my own research, like comparing what the church website says to the CES letter, all that kind of stuff, public records, all that. So yeah, this is a really great place to start for questioning Mormons. It covers all the fraud with Joseph Smith, the inaccuracies of the Book of Mormon, how the Book of Abraham is a false translation, stuff like that. Basically just to disproves the foundation of the church and if the foundation of the church isn't true then neither is the church if joseph smith isn't a prophet and the book of mormon isn't true then neither is the church and that's like where i found out that the church wasn't true so i kind of knew about a lot of this history because my dad is into like deep doctor and he was very open about this stuff but i didn't realize how bad it was and I never talked about it super in depth so some of the things that were alarming to me i have it all written down here so the first vision the whole basis of how the mormon church started was joseph smith saw god and Jesus Christ in a forest and he they told him that none of the churches were true and that they were gonna help him start the true restored gospel of Jesus Christ well he did not write this down until 12 years I believe it's 12 after it happened and there are four accounts of the first vision I don't know about you but if I saw God I'd probably be like telling everyone posting it in the newspaper like writing it down immediately telling my friends and family so that was just like a little bit of a red flag for me um, and then you get into the versions so the church church uses the third version which is where he saw God and Jesus Christ the other versions talk about seeing just the Lord not two separate personages and then some other versions talk about seeing angels so not even God at all I don't know why there were different versions and I understand that stories can get like over exaggerated and stuff but like if you're writing down your own personal account of something crazy like this that happened you'd probably remember it and write it down correctly so that was just confusing um, another alarming thing that it talks about in the CES letters it compares the Book of Mormon map and geography to where Joseph Smith grew up and a lot of the cities have very similar names so he could have easily just wrote them down in the Book of Mormon changed the name a little bit oh no one will notice and then the Book of Mormon also talks about things that didn't exist back then like materials and technology that was not available in the Americas at the time of the Book of Mormon but they're in the Book of Mormon and then we get on to the two most upsetting and I think these are the two things that break most ex-Mormons shelves so we have racism in the church and polygamy in the church so racism in the church Black people did not receive the priesthood and the priesthood is basically like God's power and it's given to perform ordinances, to give blessings, to baptize, all that kind of stuff and only men can have it. Black people were not allowed to have the priesthood until 1978, so pretty recent. Um, also a teaching that is in the Book of Mormon and you can find many sources of this actually being taught like in children's books and blatantly talked about 
about in the church is that black people were cursed. God cursed them for being not righteous. And the more righteous they were, the lighter their skin would become. So back in the day, Mormons literally believed that black people were cursed and that white people were righteous. Pretty racist. And now for polygamy. So, a lot of people do know about Joseph and his multiple wives, and obviously Mormons are very known for like, oh, how many wives do you have? Like, me, no, no, even though it's like outlawed now. Well, this is where it comes from. I was not aware of how bad it was. So, Joseph Smith, I guess, had claimed that he had to restore all things, all things from the gospel of Jesus Christ. So this included polygamy and there's rumors that it also just included concubines. So Joseph had like a ton of wives. I don't know how many there were, probably like 30 plus. Multiple of them were underage. The youngest was 14 years old. And people always say, well, oh, well times were different back then. But if you do your research, no one was marrying 14 year olds back then. That was weird. People hated Joseph Smith for this. I did a bunch of research on why Joseph Smith was arrested and he was arrested like 17 different times and one of them was literally for polygamy so keep that in mind. Joseph Smith also claims that he had no sexual relations and Mormons always push this but I found proof under oath because Joseph Smith was on trial for this seven women claimed to have sexual relations with Joseph and the most important fact about all of this is that Emma Smith had no idea the whole thing about polygamy was that your first wife has to consent to it and Emma had no idea about these wives until after Joseph was already married to multiple of them and keep in mind that Emma Smith did in fact leave the Mormon church so this was just like blatantly an affair and Mormons always say that he married all these women because he needed to be sealed to them um, because they're like weren't enough men to go around and you have to be sealed to make it into the celestial kingdom so he would get sealed to these women purely for that reason well if that's the case then why joseph did you marry your friends wives so he would send his friends on missions so their husbands would be gone and then joseph smith would marry them so these women are already married and joseph smith is marrying them he married a mother and daughter pair as well um yeah there's just like a lot more that goes into that and not only is disrespectful to women it's embarrassing people in america did not appreciate it um the more research i did the more i found out that he wasn't necessarily kicked out of states for persecution for just having the church and oh people just hated the church people hated joseph and they chased him out because they hated him so that's at least what i found from my research so here's the thing you could disprove a couple of these you could disprove a ton of these but each of these are all reasons to leave the church and all of them have been proven and backed up. Um, the one about the book of Abraham is literally on the church website. The church website in their book of Abraham gospel topic essays says, we don't know why the actual translation of the scrolls that the book of Abraham come from don't line up with Joseph Smith's translation. They admit it right there. And yet we're just supposed to believe everything that Joseph did. And it's crazy to me that we're just supposed to believe this one guy or a couple of men. I think there's like 13 witnesses of the Book of Mormon. We're just supposed to believe these couple of men who probably wanted money and power back in the day. And that's concerning to me. And another thing for me is like, if this was God's true church, there wouldn't be so many mistakes. And I know people say, oh, well, they're men, they make mistakes. But if you are a true prophet of God, he's gonna put you in line. And that was not happening here. So these were kind of some of the first things I've learned and I've learned a lot more since then, but it's just crazy. And just like every aspect of the church, the Bible doesn't say this. Jesus never actually said that. Don't know where this came from. And a lot of times Mormons back up Mormonism with the Book of Mormon. So it's like, hey, I'm gonna back up my lies with more lies. So other things I disagree with with Mormons are that they say they are the only true church. They are God's restored church. This is the correct church. And how is it possible that God could just have one true church? You don't need a church with man-made rules to tell you how to worship God. It's all about your relationship with God. And to me, at the end of the day, that was the thing. I just felt like the Mormon church was holding me back so much from having an actual relationship with God because there were all these standards and rules and things you have to follow, things you have to do. This gets you into heaven. This gets you into this kingdom of heaven. This gets you here. You need to do this, this, and this. When it's like, whoa, whoa, I don't even have a relationship with God. I don't even know God. Another thing is that prophets are constantly like making mistakes and it's always justified by these are just men. But how are you supposed to know when they're speaking of man and speaking of God? That is really concerning that this prophet of the Mormon church can just say whatever's on his mind and he could claim it's of God if he wants. I talked about the bishop thing a little bit, but it is still just so concerning to me. Like if you do a big sin, um, 
or it's gonna get your temple recommend taken away. There's a couple questions on the temple recommend thing. You have to talk one on one with a bishop, and it's just like weird to me. Another thing is just like pressures. Like women are expected to get married and have children at a very young age. It's taught that like basically women's whole purpose is to have children, and men are very heavily expected to serve missions for the church, which has caused a lot of like trauma for men. You're basically told exactly how to live. You're also told to give 10% of your earnings no matter how poor you are, which is funny because I saw a quote actually the other day that Joseph Smith said, one day the church will have so much money that we won't have to take money from the members. And the church today is worth over $1 billion and you still have to give 10% to the church. Um, also, a lot of people don't know that the apostles and prophets of the church are paid. That one's not like that big of a deal to me, but I just feel like it's not talked about enough, so I wanted to throw that in there. But the church finds a way to defend every single one of these. They have apologetics and they always are trying to back it up and manipulate their members into believing even though all of this is true. I just can't follow a church that has such a terrible history that was started by a guy who just wasn't even a great guy. And it just feels blasphemous to follow some random guy who claimed to see God and claimed to be a prophet. To me, the whole thing about the Mormon church is it literally just feels like heresy. The church loves to say that they're never changing, yet they're constantly changing their policies and coming up with new ones and covering up the old ones, never apologizing for the ones that were bad. They're always evolving and changing with the world. If this was God's true one church, I really don't think that would be happening. And people love to say that the church isn't perfect, but the gospel is. But that is where I also don't see eye to eye because the Mormon gospel contradicts the Bible and Christianity, and it just doesn't make any sense. So now I'm going to talk about a little bit of the differences between Christianity and Mormonism because I now understand this. I'm not like super, super educated in it, but I have a good idea. So Mormons think that they are Christian, but most Christians don't think that Mormons are Christian because of the way that they see God, basically. Uh, Mormons think that they are literally God's restored true church. So first we're going to start off with just the Mormon God. So Mormons believe in the Father, the Son, and the Spirit as the Godhead. They are three separate beings. So they believe Jesus is God's literal son. So Jesus is not God. He's just his son. And they work together, but they're separate. They also believe in a heavenly mother, which technically means they believe in like four gods. And that's just really confusing. I also noticed that their God is so little to how God really is. And Mormonism like God came from other parents and he then he became exalt, exalted into Godhood and he like has a wife he's pretty much like brought down to like a human person just with godly powers is kind of how I interpret the Mormon version of the God another thing in Mormonism is you're taught that you can exalt into becoming a god and there are three tiers of heaven so basically they believe in a pre-mortal world and then you come down to earth you have this like divine purpose that you received in the pre-mortal world and um also in the pre-mortal world jesus volunteered to become christ come to earth and then you die you go into the spirit world and you're either in spirit prison or spirit paradise if you've already had all of your temple things done then you get to go to judgment day and those things include baptism gift of the holy ghost endowment and seal in the temple. If you don't have these things done, then you go into the spirit prison where you are then given a second chance to accept Jesus, which is not taught anywhere in the Bible that you receive a second chance as far as I know. So basically Mormonism is like, hey, we expect all this of you, but if you don't even know any of this, then it's fine because you just get a second chance after you die and like it's proof that it's true. Like once you receive proof, like you get a second chance. That's crazy. So that's what the whole baptism for the dead and endowments for the dead and ceilings for the dead. It's for those people. So once you do it on earth, then they can choose to accept it up in heaven. After that, you have judgment day and then you are sent to a tier of heaven. So there's not just heaven. There is the celestial sea turtle. Celestial terrestrial and telestial. So telestial is people who like um, are like more sinners or whatever and then it's like you just get better and better so if you are like you have a great relationship with God you did all of your uh, temple ordinances and you're like the best of the best then you go to the celestial kingdom which is where you can reach exaltation and part of exaltation is becoming a God yourself. So how do you be little God? You become a God. Doesn't make any sense. Why would you worship a God if you can become a God? I'm just a little kind of seems like heresy little bit. Oh, sorry. I just kind of like went off. 
So another thing in Mormonism is that you are taught that the spirit talks to you through your feelings. How convenient, because feelings can be manipulated in so many situations. You throw someone in a very spiritual setting where everyone's like crying and stuff and your feelings get manipulated, you could easily be taught, oh, that's the spirit talking to you. That's the spirit confirming that this is all true. But like your feelings can change based on if you accidentally stub your toe or if you just received a million dollars. Feelings are very easy manipulated. Mormons also believe that they literally have God's power through the priesthood, which doesn't make sense when you actually research where the priesthood came from in the Bible. And basically we no longer need the priesthood because of Jesus. So in conclusion, one man named Joseph Smith successfully created a religion. It easily draws people in with false hope and promises and somehow it stuck. They promised people that families are forever and you're promised that you can reach exaltation and become a God. When you're Mormon, you are told you can never be happy outside the church. You're told this is the truth and this is where the answers are nowhere else. Everyone else has it wrong. They all have little pieces, but we hold them all together. So for this and so much more that I'm not even gonna get into today, I have left the Mormon church. I will not go back. I do not believe it is true. There are just too many faults and I'm currently on my own path to creating a relationship with God and becoming a Christian. Since going down this path, I've never felt more content and sure of my decisions. I definitely now looking back can see how God was guiding me in this path, but I was just like in denial of it and didn't want it. And of course, God isn't gonna force himself on you. But now that I have chosen to accept him, it's like crazy how much my eyes have been opened. So in conclusion, something I realized in the Mormon church is that most people focus on the church and not actually God himself. They blindly accept and follow the prophet. Everything he says is pure truth. People might get, offend people might get offended by this, but Mormons don't really think for themselves. And they get super offended when their truth is questioned, such as in this video. The church is their entire life, their entire identity. They don't know who they are other than just being Mormon. That's just my personal observation. I'm now working on finding happiness and I can't have this toxic religion in my life to do that. Since leaving the church, I've never felt more free, more myself, more content with life. And most importantly, I am much closer with God now. Another thing is when you leave the church, people say mean things to you. They tell you that you're never gonna be happy. You're throwing your life away. Um, and you just have to remember that those people are, they're Mormon. Their identity is being Mormon. So when you take that and question it and tell them that it's wrong and that you don't want anything to do with it, of course they're gonna be deeply offended and hurt. And uh, Mormonism is very good at manipulation and Mormons are taught how to manipulate and so they may try to manipulate you and your feelings and your emotions and you can't blame them because you gotta look at their circumstances. Ultimately, I want everyone to take away from this that the most important thing in life is your relationship with God, not religion. Relationships should always come first before religion. My problem is not with Mormon people. My problem is with the Mormon church. This church has good people and good teachings just as every other church does, but in my personal opinion, I feel like they do more harm by teaching false teachings of God than they do good. I know a lot of people may take offense to this video, including many of my family members, but to me, this video is more important than hurting people's feelings. And because I truly do love them, I want them to know the truth. And because I truly love all of you, I want you all to know the truth. So there you have it. That's why I left the Mormon church. I'm learning to retrain my brain, reprogram myself from all the brainwashing I received. I'm learning to love all humans and see them as people rather than members and non-members. And most importantly, like I said, I am working on my relationship with God. I love you all. Thank you so much for the support and following me down this journey and being so interested in this topic. And just so people know, a lot of times the way that I cope with tragedy, such as figuring out your religion wasn't true, is with humor. So you may see me posting just funny stuff about it. I'm not trying to make fun of it. I'm trying to cope with my own trauma. But if you have any more questions, my DMs are open. I know they're going to be flooded because they always are with people telling me their story. And that's the whole purpose of this. I want to be a safe place for people who are questioning their faith, questioning if they should leave Mormonism, and to come to me and I can reassure them, give them a safe place, give them hope. Because you are not alone. I've been through the same thing and plenty of people have been through the same thing. It's hard, it can be traumatizing, but I am here for you. So my DMs are open, Sid Francis on Instagram. And if you have any other questions, feel free to comment them down below. I have a feeling I'll end up doing a follow-up video on this with all the questions that you may have. That's it for this video. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye!